Okay, we're looking to get started here on 2017 uh, paper one, question one. Okay, so just to go back to the beginning here, I'll put a full screen. So this question here, now sorry, part A. Okay, um, it's worth now 10 marks. Okay, it's got a C grade, so f there's four jumps in scale, four for lower partial, six for higher partial, and then 10 for full marks. Part A here, a new machine is bought for 30,000 euro. Its value depreciates. So obviously that means it goes down by 15% each year for five years. Okay, so 50% every year for five years. Okay, now find the value of the machine at the end of the five years. Now if, you, if you're stuck with a question like this, now I've put in the uh, screen print of page 30 of the Maths Tales, which has your compound interest formula. Okay, and down here it has your depreciation formula, which is both like reverse compound interest. You notice there they're very similar, except for the plus here in the compound interest because it's going up, and the minus here for the depreciation formula because it's going down. So, obviously, it's that last formula we need. Now, you could do this by breaking it down by finding 85% of 30,000 and doing that again five times, okay, because it it's, it's compounding. Um, if you, if that's, to, I suppose, something that, that's not making sense, um, then you're looking at a situation where you're trying to grab some attempts, okay? So, uh, if, if you found even 15% of 30,000, it's going to most likely get you to low partial. I'd have to be, look at the max scheme more closely. But always make sure you do something on the page, especially with a percentage question, because the max can be awarded for, really any relevant work, okay? So, let's go straight to the answer here, okay? Now, I've chosen, if you see it here, that's the depreciation formula. Now, I might have it written a little bit different than the uh, final value equals put, um, the principal times whatever. Um, I've it written here slightly differently, but if I'd broken down the A is the final amount, P is the principal, R is the percentage, and N is the number of years, okay? So once you have your formula, I would write the formula down. You don't need this breakdown of what the formula means, okay? But you need then to show your sample calculation, okay? And you fill your data, put it to the calculator, or come as your answer, make sure you include the euro symbol for units, okay? Now, I put this down here at the bottom, just to remind you, even though you probably know this, that 15% is the same thing as 15 parts in 100, okay? Which in decimal form is the same as 0.15. So that's where I've gotten this this answer here. You, you know, just uh, that is important to understand that, that they, those three things are the same thing. Okay. Uh, as I said here in the bottom, you could do this by reducing by 15% five times. So get 50%, take it away, um, and work out from that perspective. So there are multiple ways to do this question, all perfectly valid. Now, part B here, okay. Uh, Sum of money was invested for two years at 3% compound interest. Okay. At the end of the two years, it amounted to 30,000. Find the sum invested. Okay. So there's your three pieces of information. Uh, in a different situation, if I was doing this with pen, I'd, I'd write those pieces of information out on the page. Uh, again, this is a 10C question. So low partial four, high partial six. Again, I put the formulas down here um, just to let you pick which formula it is. And again, they're on page 30 of the math tables. And this is a compound interest for question. Okay, it's increasing. So this is the formula we choose. Okay. Now, if we move on to the answer just to save ourselves the time. Again, I've used my own notation here, but A is final amount. P is principal. R is the percentage rate, which is 3%. And N is the number of years, which is 2. Okay. So I fill the formula in. Now, in this situation, the unknown is not on the left, which is kind of our standard default. Um, you could rearrange the question in advance, okay, um, in order to, to I suppose, solve in a general sense for P. Probably a valid thing to do. Uh, now, quite simply, if you were doing it, P is being multiplied by this term here, 1 plus R to the power of N. That will move as a chunk, being multiplied on the right. So if it were to move over to the left, it would become the opposite of what it's doing on the right. It would become divided. Uh, basically done that down here, okay, um, and you have your 3,000 divided by that term there, that number. I put it to the calculator, no point breaking, wasting time, that whole thing can be programmed into the calculator, as long as you're careful, and you end up with the answer 28,277, 
which if you think you would expect, you're increasing your amount up to 30,000 over two years. So it's good that number, your answer should be less than 30,000 for a starting point. Now that's part B then. Okay, so part C here, usually the most challenging is the 5C question. Okay, so it jumps of zero to two to three to five. So low partial two, high partial three. A company invested 25,000 for three years. Okay, at a fixed rate of interest. Okay. At the end of the three years, it amounted to 26,000, whatever. Okay. Find your rate of interest. So again, this is not a standard question in the sense that you're, you're unknown as on the left, everything else on the, on the right. You're going to have to either rearrange or deal with the algebra of moving things around to the equation. Now, if it goes straight to the answer, okay, so I have my compound interest formula. We saw that in part B. We have our answer. Okay. So the final amount. We had our starting amount. The, N was the three years, so our only unknown is the R. Uh, as you've probably heard me say before in other videos, uh, an equation of one unknown is solvable, an equation of two or more unknowns is not. So either look for more information, or you've gone down the wrong avenue. Now, what I've done here is I've brought the 25,000 across, okay, uh, at this step here. And basically the 25,000 was multiplying on the right, so therefore when it goes across to the opposite side, it becomes divided. Now this, the, the sign doesn't change, okay, uh, it's the operator that changes. So it was multiplying on the right, becomes divided on the left. And the same thing here, uh, you have the, on the right hand side, you have the 1 plus R term, uh, so the power of uh, 3. So when that goes across the equal, it becomes the opposite. And the opposite of cubing is cube rooting. Okay, so I cube root everything on the far side. I end up then with um, this number 1.02. Uh, is equal to 1 plus r, bring the 1 across, becomes subtracted. It was adding on the right, does the opposite on the left, and you end up with 0 0.02. Now, 0 0.02 represents the same thing as 2%. So, 0 0.02 multiplied by 100 will give you the percentage. Okay, and that's the rate of interest. Job done. Okay, so that's question 2 finished. So, question 1 finished, and see you in question 2. Thank you.